All right, so we're gonna review all the different models and ways that we can find common denominators for our test this Thursday. So let's start, let's talk about the money model. So when is the money model helpful? Well, the money model is helpful when we have denominators, uh, when both of our denominators in our fractions are factors of 100. So that would be any of these numbers below, five, four, 2, 10, 20, 25, 50, all of those are factors of 100. So we're going to go to a slide and let's see if we can use the money model for that slide. All right, I just pulled up a random slide. I'm going to look at my denominators. I see that I have a denominator of six and three. So I want to ask myself, can I use the money model? Can 100 be divided by both 6 and 3. And for this, the answer is no. I cannot use the money model. If I head back to slide 2, I will see that the factors of 100 are right here and 3 and 6 are both not on here. So the money model will not help me with that problem. Let's head to another slide. Let's look at slide, whoops. 11. So slide 11, we have denominators of 10 and 5. Can I divide 100 by both of those numbers? If I'm not sure, I'll go ahead and look back on slide 2, where I see that I have both 10 and 5 listed as factors of 100. So for this problem, the money model will help me. So let's head back to slide 11. Our problem is 9 tenths minus 3 fifths. Let's use the money model to solve this. Okay, so my problem is 9 tenths minus 3 fifths. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out my pieces. I've got a dollar for both of these. I want to find equivalent fractions to 9 tenths. So that way I could see what my common denominator is. Because remember, I cannot subtract these two fractions right now. They have different denominators. So let's take a look at 9 tenths. When I think of 9 tenths, I see that 10 as my denominator and I know that I can fit 10 dimes into a dollar. So 10 cents is going to be equal to 1 tenth. But I need 9 tenths. So I'm going to pull over 9 dimes. 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So here I have 9 out of 10 rows colored in, just like my fraction shows. So some other ways that I can write this, I can write this out of 100 total cents. And that would be 90 cents out of 100. So 100 is one of our common denominators when we're talking money. Another common denominator that we could have for this problem would be out of 20. So we know that 10 dimes fits into a dollar. What we know then also is that a nickel is half of a dime. So we can fit 20 dimes, I'm sorry, 20 nickels into a, an entire dollar. So here, if we were to cut these dimes in half, we would have five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 nickels out of 20 total. So here are some equivalent fractions to 9 tenths. Now let's work with 3 fifths. So when I look at my denominator, I see a 5. And I want to think, well, what is 1 fifth of 100? How I would figure that out? is I would divide 100 into five equal pieces. And I'm gonna get 20. I don't have a coin that equals 20 cents, but I do have a coin that I can bring two out of that would equal 20 cents. So here, my two dimes is going to equal one fifth, but I need three fifths, so I have to bring out 
two more dimes. Now I have two fifths. When I bring out two more dimes or 20 cents, I get three fifths. Okay, so let's first start with our common denominator of 100. Three fifths is also equal to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 cents out of 100. So my new problem up here, if I'm using the denominator of 100, I can do 90 out of 100 minus 60 out of 100, and I would get 30 out of 100. That is one answer. Another way I can do this would be out of tenths or out of twentieths. So let's take a look here. Three fifths is also equal to one, two, three, four, five, six out of ten. So I could have nine tenths minus six tenths, and I'm going to get three tenths. Another way I could split this up is I can turn them into nickels. Here I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve nickels out of twenty total possible. So I would take my equivalent fraction from nine tenths, I would take my equivalent fraction from three fifths, and now I could do 18 twentieths minus 12 twentieths. Okay, so we have three different answers here that we can get for the same problem. All of them are correct. These are some common denominators that you will find with money pieces. You will often see a denominator of 100 or 20 or 10. Sometimes you might even see a denominator of four if you are working with fourths. Um, but these are some common denominators you can find when thinking about money. Let's head back to our class kick. Now let's head to page three and talk about our clock model. So when is the clock model helpful? This is helpful when we have denominators that are factors of 60. So let's go back to that first page we saw. We saw on page 12 that we had a denominator of six and a denominator of three. Well, I know that a clock or 60 minutes can be divided by both six and by three. So this works for the clock model. So I'm gonna head on over to the clock app. What is it? So I'm gonna head on over to the clock app and I'm going to write my equation on here. I already forgot it again. Three six plus two thirds, okay. So we are gonna be doing three, three six plus two thirds. Again, we are gonna find common denominators so we can add these fractions up. We cannot add these fractions up right now because of their denominators. They are not the same. So let's start with three six. So I'm gonna add a clock with fractions. I'm gonna split it into six parts. So it tells me right there that each part is 10 minutes. Okay, so this is one six, that is 10 minutes. This is two six, which is 20 minutes. And then we've got three six, which is 30 minutes. So one fraction I can have that is equivalent to three six would be 30 out of 60. That's 30 minutes out of 60. Another fraction that I could have for this would be six five minute markers out of 12 total. Another fraction that I could have, you may have seen, notice this right away, one half, right? Half of my clock is colored in. So here are just a few fractions that I can have that are equivalent to three six. Now let's look at two thirds. 
We're gonna add another clock with fractions. We're gonna split it into three parts. This tells me right here that each part is 20 minutes long. So I'm gonna add this piece up here. Now I wanna color in two thirds of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and color in one third, which is 20 minutes, two third, which is 40 minutes. So now I've got 40 minutes here out of 60 or I've got oops, eight five minute markers out of 12 total. And I cannot do anything with the denominator of two because this is more than a half, okay? I could split this into six and then I would see that I have one, two, three, four, six. colored in. So here are my common denominators now. I've got 60, I've got 12, and I've got 6. All of those are common denominators. So here are some other problems that I could have. If I'm looking at my minutes, I could add up 30 sixtieths plus 40 sixtieths, and I will get 70 sixtieths or one and 10 sixtieths. Okay, another problem that I could get would be if I'm using my five minute markers. So I'm gonna add up six twelfths plus eight twelfths and I will get 14 twelfths or one and two twelfths. All right, and if I add up my fractions that I have with the six as the denominator, I would take this three six right here and I would do three six plus four six and I would get seven six or one and one six. All of these are correct when using our clock fractions. All right, guys, if you still need help, please message Ms. Fisher on Zoom or on Seesaw.